after the whole Pop OS killing itself thing, a bunch of people started sending me this page from the Debian wiki, basically explaining if you're using Debian, it should only be used with the Debian repos, anything else is risky and not supported by the developers. So that got me thinking, should distro forks even really exist. Obviously, I have no control over what other people are going to make. If you want to make a distro based on Debian, based on Arch, anything like that, feel free to do so. But how about, should you, as a Linux user, actually use one of these distro forks? Obviously, this post is just about Debian and Apt, but other distro bases like Arch, Fedora, Gen2, things like that, are all going to have their own sort of different problems. But one important thing to consider is not all distro forks are created in the same way. I'm not talking about whether it's a rolling or a stable release, I'm talking about the way the repos are actually structured. I would say there are three categories that a distro fork can fit into, and only one of those categories can lead to breakages that are different from the base. One of those categories is no additional repos. This would be a distro fork that takes the original base, let's say Arch Linux, then changes out the pre-installed software, let's say gives it a desktop environment, gives it a web browser, gives it a different audio server, changes the way the default software installed is actually configured, but ultimately everything being done on this distro fork is doable on the original distro. Basically a distro in this category is just a glorified rice. The only repos accessible by default are the same ones that are used on the base distro. The second category is additional or modified repos. These are distro forks where they might be riced differently from the original base just to make them stand out a bit and give the users a reason why they might want to use them, but the important thing is the repos they have access to might be extra from what the original base has, or they might be filtered in some way where the software available is different. Things like this would be, say, PopOS or Manjaro. And then the third category is the full custom repo. This is probably the least common type because hosting your entire own repo can get incredibly expensive incredibly quickly, and only a few projects actually have the resources to maintain this. But it's best not even treat one of these distros like the base, because even though it might share similar applications, None of that software is coming from the same location. Yes, maybe they maintain the exact same package manager as the base, but none of the original base repos are accessible in that package manager by default. If you wanted to add them yourself, go ahead and do so, but that's not the intended use case for the distro. Generally, when you see a distro like this, it's not gonna be what you typically think of as a desktop Linux distro. Things like Chrome OS, things like distro forks you would see in cars, but even so, there are some examples in the desktop Linux space, things like Ubuntu. Yes, it is based off of Debian, but from Ubuntu, by default, you're not installing anything from the Debian repos, everything is coming from the Ubuntu repos, the Debian repos are only used during development. Now, before someone says anything, I am well aware that the Ubuntu repos are based on Debian testing, but Debian testing isn't used directly on Debian anyway, if you want to use it on Debian, you have to go and enable it. So I think in this case, it still does count. Distros in category one and three really aren't of any concern. Category one, they're using everything used on the base anyway, so nothing new can break there. And category three, while they can break differently from the base, they're not breaking because of the base's repos. The problem with a category 2 distro though is that when a distro base or a category 3 distro is created, this distro is designed around what packages are going to be available in the standard or core repos, whatever you want to call them. These packages are tested and specific versions are expected to be available, and when they're not available, that's when you start to see some issues. For example, with the aforementioned PopOS issue. Now, the PopOS issue was caused by the PopOS repos not containing a dependency for the newer version of Steam contained within those repos, and then app trying to roll back to the version available over on Ubuntu. But even in cases where there are no packaging issues and everything is packaged exactly as it should be, you can still see some problems. For example, with Manjaro and the AUR. Now, the AUR is by no means perfect, even on base Arch Linux. Many packages out there haven't been packaged properly, or they'll have out-of-date dependencies, or the dependencies have been updated, but the program hasn't been updated, and it's just sort of a massive mess. But when it is working, the AUR is designed around what is available on Arch Linux. 
While Manjaro doesn't access the Arch Repos directly, the Manjaro Repos are a modified version of the Arch Repos. Basically, they're a more out-of-date version because they want to do extra testing and all of that fun stuff. But due to this, some of the dependencies which would have lined up now don't, and you try to install something from the AUR, and it might not actually install properly. So I guess we should just never use a Category 2 distro then, and always use a base distro. Well, no. There are legitimate reasons why you might want to use something in Category 2. For example, with PopOS, you get the benefits that come from Ubuntu and its fixed point release, but you still get more up-to-date drivers, more up-to-date kernel, and other software you might want to experience without having to wait for the next six-month release. And maybe not just more up-to-date software, maybe more software available in general. Maybe there are things missing from the base distro standard repos, but in this distro forks repos, they're now just available. Obviously, you could always just go and build the application yourself, or if it's a proprietary application, extract the dev and all of that fun stuff and get it working. But if you don't have to do that, that is incredibly convenient. But maybe your goal isn't more software, maybe your goal is less software. Take for example Parabola Linux. This is a distro that only comes with free software, and while you can go and tell it to install other things, if you're using something like Parabola, your goal is just free software. And in the case of a perfectly managed distro, something in Category 2 can add a lot of extra functionality that maybe is something you care about. I don't believe I can just answer this generally saying, this is what you should do, everybody should just use base distros, everybody should use category 2 distros or anything like that. It is very much a distro by distro question and up to the user who is going to be looking at the distro they want to use. What's more important to you, is it the stability that comes from using a distro in the way it was intended to be used, or is it the additional availability of software and newer versions of software that you might actually need for your use case? Do you trust the maintainers of the distro fork to actually handle it properly, or would you prefer to go with the distro base where there are less things that are liable to break? I'll let you guys think about that and come to your own conclusions. Now, I don't think that one massive break in your Pop OS is going to stop me recommending it, because I don't recommend any distro to people unless I think they can actually handle what the state of Linux currently is. I don't go around installing Linux on people who are non-technical users. If I am suggesting Linux to you, I assume you have some level of problem solving, some level of a developer mindset, and can handle this stuff yourself. Let me know down below what distro you're running and why you're using that distro, and did this video make you maybe reevaluate whether that distro choice is something you should stick with? I would love to know. So if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to only bearer pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays where I live stream twice a week, upload about five of YouTube shorts, and this channel is also available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out. <laughs>